All right, the bolts are off that hold the caliper on, and they take a socket that is on the end of the ratchet. It's a Allen key 516 maybe? I don't know. I just buy the whole set. So now I can take the caliper off and the sun is shining. It's a Harley riding day and I've had my five minute ride. It's a good idea to retract the caliper piston slightly. Just jam something in there and push the piston back. And you're wondering what I'm talking about if you've never done this before. Well, live and learn. Um, oh, with that, uh, three o'clock marketplace money is over. I'm going to turn on the next radio show. There's the caliper. Push these back in a bit. Caliper sliders. And a lot of little things that you got to know, and I can't explain them to y'all. I'm not sure if you can see that. Now they're talking about a comedian computer. Yeah, a computer that reads the crowd and recognizes the difference in laughs. There's caliper. Ugh, fluid film everywhere. Better than rust. It was a wild Mustang just went by. Caliper. I'm going to have to push these sliders back slightly and I'm going to have to retract the piston in the caliper. That's a piston that comes out to squeeze the rotor. Now the rotor can come off and the bearings are going to go flying, so you've got to be careful not to dump your bearings. Therefore, I'm going to put a piece of cardboard that I got here. So I dump the bearings, they end up on cardboard. They don't come out the back because there's a seal in the back, but it can fall out of the front. So beware that there's a bearing right there that'll come up right on the ground. Plop. Inspect the bearings for galling, burning, chips in the roller surface. Set the rotor down under the vehicle. Oh, got grease everywhere. Set the rotor down like that. With the nose up, the hub up, clunk and put something on top of it so you don't get dirt from the vehicle there dropping in there. That's not a good thing. You're going to get something to put on top of it that's not all greasy and grimy. Boy, is that sun ever shiny. What have I got here in this shop that I could set on top? Plastic bag will fly away. There we go. There's my vacuum pump for my 6.5 I'm not going to install. Just haven't had a chance to think about it. I'm going to stick this box over the top of the open hub so I don't get junk inside. Right there. Now I take off these bolts here. This big backing plate comes off and the axle can come out. This is attached to that. And the axle comes out and the knuckle comes off. The steering arm, blah, 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 blah. Keep it up. All right. All the nuts are removed. It came off easily because there's no rust on this T-Ruck. And there is the backing plate. Look at that, cadmium plated. That's what holds the caliper in place. Keeps the dust off the rotor. Fluid film all the way around. Gotta stop the rust. Now, on mix match, this, what do you call it, a knuckle? Axle shaft? bearing holder. A mix match that was in there tight. I had to hammer on it for a half an hour. Boy, beat the crap out of it. What was going to happen on this baby? How big of a hammer do I need? BFH. BFH. place you can hammer on this is in the middle. Bearing rides here and there. Seal rides there. Nothing goes here. Joining surface. Right there. Tap on it. There 
it comes. Not rusted like on my mix match. I'm making a deal with a friend of mine to start scrapping stuff. I've been working on it for a couple of months. Now he wants a turbo that I have on mix match. So I said, You want the turbo? You gotta start scrapping stuff before you get the turbo. He's a good guy, but gets carried away in too many projects because he's young. Not an old guy like me. Chisel. Alright, I'm going to hammer on this a little bit over here. Well, I'll admit it. I already got it off. I ran out of memory. So, you can only hit it here. Not there. The bearing ride's there. Not there. The bearing ride's there. Not there. The seal ride's there. Or the seal ride's here, actually. So, the way to get it off is to tap it with a hammer and or Take a chisel, and I just got it in my toolbox, and hit it, right there. See. Chisel. Gets in between and gets that beautifully machined part off that was probably machined in Ohio or Indiana. I already had it off, and then I looked at the camera and I ran out of memory. Boring. There it is. There is needle bearings inside. Nice, good shape. I'm going to take this and put it in a spot where it won't get rained on. Right there. Now, the axle can come out. Center the seal and it should slide right out, huh? Get to check my universal joint. Hmm. Usually that comes right out. Don't know what's holding it back. Right well, that radio sounds good. Listening to uh, Radio Land with Robert Crowlwich. The Confederates are the real people that the judges are talking about. Because huh. remember, half the conversation the judges have with people, half are with computers. Genuine original GM Spicer. Ain't coming out. Exactly. One vote away. He's a bigger crowbar. To some extent. How can I get involved on behalf of humanity? How can I sort of take a stand? <laughs> <laughs> um, Big, rusty right, crowbar. Are now representing all the <laughs> Brian There it is. Huh. Oh, the joint is perfect, like brand new. A bit of grease at the end. There it is. One axle shaft. Feels perfect. Hard to believe after 28 years, huh? From people who believe that actually they are being connected to humans. Don't think I ever changed this. Oh, like they think they've been tricked. Yes. Tricked into coming to a site that claims to be a bot when in fact they're talking to humans. But no, no program could possibly respond in this way. But there is a certain element of truth in that. To explain, Rollo Carpenter, Bill Bryant, was one of those people who was completely obsessed by computers. I was indeed a computery kid, or just a computer. 
Oops. Part of I created a program that talked to him. Okay. Yes. You typed in something, it would say something back. So at that time, the responses were essentially pre programmed and really simple, kind of like Eliza. But at one evening, fast forward many years, he is in his apartment. One thing. Now I gotta take these things off, and there's tapered washers in there, and they're a nuisance to get out. So one big bolt there, one bolt there, one bolt there, and the whole knuckle comes off, and I throw it in the vise, and I fight with the ball joints. Oh, the sun is bright. Well, this cotter pin didn't come out that easily. Rusted inside, but I got it out. Now I can put a socket on here, get that off, and those off. Those will be interesting. Those will be interesting. Alright, I got the nut off. I'm going to leave it on a few threads, and I'm going to take two hammers and start swinging at the tie rod end. Two hammers, so I don't put the threads inadvertently. Put one hammer. I'm going to turn the steering to the left. Better. Crank this baby up. Need power steering for a 6.2 diesel. Sometimes these pop off in one shot. That's why you have the nut on, not to hit the threads. There goes the caliper. Everything has got fluid film on it. My fender, my fresh pisser paint. Oh, three shots. Sometimes you get hit on that thing for half an hour. Now, those nuts come off. I know it's camera's not compensating for the bright sun in the shade. Let's see what size are these. Hey, I'm Chad Abumrad. I'm Robert Cole. Oh, one size bigger. Seven eighths. Put them so the size is oriented in the same direction. Take the seven eighths socket that I use to take off the wheels. Right there. Impact gun. Here's a tricky part. I'll show you why in a second. These come right off. I'll show you what the problem is in a second. There's a problem here. So it was an over engineered problem. You'll see. One nut's already inside there, so now I got two nuts in the tecton socket. All right, here's the problem. And you wouldn't know it unless you'd already been in here, whoops, once before. I mangled this once and it caused me great grief. These are not washers. Repeat, they are not washers. They are conically shaped locking plugs. They're huge. They're uh, three quarters of an inch long. They're about that long. And they go inside there and they center the knuckle, the steering arm on the knuckle. So if you hammer on that to remove it, you hit it against the threads and it won't come out. And the more you hammer on it, the worse it gets. So I wonder what the GM technique is to remove those. But they do not come out easily. You don't want to make a mess of them. Hmm. I once took a center punch to those to try to get underneath them, and all I did is mangle them, and they really wouldn't come out. It took me a couple hours to get what should be a two-second operation. Okay, there it goes. 
break. Don't hang calipers from the hoses like I'm doing right now. I want to put that over there. Yep. When you tighten down the nut, let me try to get in the sun here. When you tighten the nut against that conically shaped sleeve, it squishes on the stud. If you, if, you, if you disfigure it by hitting it on the edge with a punch or a screwdriver, it won't come off. So I'm going to fight with these ones, turn the camera off. Oh, that sun. Well, I've been beating on this for 15 minutes and I finally got the first conical washer to come loose. And I suspect there's rust underneath that. Nut. So, I grab one of my magnets. We're going to dive right into the center of that blur, like Greg Luganus. Is that what our graduate is named John? Okay, my name is John Rockson and I'm a rock And about a year ago, John got uh, an assignment from oh, come on. Strange. Well, I, I've never interviewed robots. There they are. Block the sun, it's terrible. There it is. There they are. There's one. Yep. Don't bugger these up. It's got the threads indented in the uh, inner. Where is this? There we go. And as soon as he got there, he said, Yeah, over engineered. They are hard to remove. They stick to the threads. One down, two to go. I've dealt with these babies before. They are a bugger. Because when you over tighten them, they squish into the threads and that locks them in place. And it's not a good thing. All right, I'm going to keep on chiseling at it ever so slightly with a hammer. And don't tell me about PB Blaster. This is not PB Blaster. This is hammer and chisel territory. I'm pounding and I'm pounding and I'm pounding and I'm making little divots. And whoop! Look at that. Got a second one. I wish there was a magic way to do this. Here's another one. This one doesn't have the indentations of the threads as badly. What a bugger. One more to go and it looks rusty inside. Though these haven't got a speck of rust, that one looks like it does. Like a planet around the star. Like a planet around the star. Oh, this fellow is on the radio show. That just seems um, is asking what Siri thinks about the taste of electricity. She says like the smell of a planet around the sun or something and he asked her about Hillary Clinton. She said married to Bill Clinton. Anything else? Nope. That's all I know about her. Secretary of State, for heaven's sakes. Oh, wait a minute. I'm just, I'm asking a question. What's your favorite joke? Do you have any secrets? Do you wish you were human? Will you sing me a song? Are you a loving robot? Are you Jewish? Are you sexual? I think I got it. You've gone very quiet. Once in a while, there's a kind of moment like I'll say, if you had legs, where would you go? And she said, Vancouver. If you had legs, where would you go, Vancouver? She said, the answer is quite complicated. Oh, I'm kidding. Asking serious, stupid questions. In its infancy. Where do you come from? And she said, well, California. California. So I said, well, tell me about your childhood. What do you remember most about your childhood? And she launches into this kind of extraordinary story. Uh, my brother. Back back to my brother. A disabled vet from Vietnam. We a disabled vet from Vietnam? We haven't heard from him in a little while. He might be deceased. He might be deceased. Vietnam. He saw friends get killed. And he was such a great, nice, charismatic person. Huh. He used to be such a nice guy, but since he came back from Vietnam, you know, he, he's a drum. All he did was carry a bear around with him. He was a homeless person. He was a homeless person. All of us are just sick and tired of it. 
She was telling me it's kind of incredibly personal stuff. It was kind of desperate. He went. So close. Even though I know that Robot Vina isn't conscious and has no sentience, and that's just wishful thinking on these people's parts. Oh, focus as close so as where's little fellers. Great. Oh, look at that. Rust underneath the grease. Where suddenly, yeah, it's like the real Come on. It's very easy to half close your eyes. Yeah, rust underneath the grease. Alright, keep on working at it. Ahead.